Hello everyone and welcome to Retro Brick Reviews, where today we will be reviewing Lego Harry Potter, set number 75948, Hogwarts Clock Tower. This set is based on a combination of elements from both Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban and Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, although the minifigure selection is strictly based on the latter of those two stories. This set includes 922 pieces, 8 minifigures, and it retails for about $90 in the United States. In different parts of the world, it released on June 1st, July 1st, or August 1st of 2019. And without any more further ado, let's begin. This set's 8 minifigures are all clad in their attire from the Yule Ball from Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, and... I think it only makes sense to start with what of all of these costumes was the one that most people were by far most excited to get in minifigure form, that being Hermione Granger. And this figure is really good. I know a lot of people have some issues with it, which I totally understand, but in my opinion, LEGO did as good a job as they could really be expected to do, considering that they definitely wouldn't have had the budget to make any new molds for this figure or to do any double molding. Starting off, her accessory is the wand piece in dark tan, and if you don't know how these work, you get two of them on each pack in each set. You get two of them connected together that you snap apart like knives or keys or anything of that sort, which normally would either leave an extra or you would get, or bo or two figures would use them and you don't have a leftover, but in this set, this is actually a first because this set includes three tan wands. So you get one connected set of two for two figures that we'll see later on, and then for Hermione here, you get a second set of two with this, with one wand that you use for her and a spare. I just think that's kind of interesting, I don't know. But anyway, this one can be held straight up or pointed out for dueling, which is nice. But removing that, for Hermione, I think we'd best start at the top and move our way down. Um, starting with the hair piece. It is the hair piece Lego originally designed in Lego Minifigures Series 15 for the Queen minifigure from that series. And I think this works quite well. Um, yeah, just looking at it from all angles, especially I think from the side it looks pretty good, and the back with those different braids is basically perfect. You can sort of see from the bottom how that works. Um, I think the one place where it doesn't look that great is from the front, just because it kind of makes it look like she has an enormous head, and that's, like, directly from the front. Like, even where I'm currently looking at it more from just the top... It's perfectly fine, but just, like, the very front, it looks a bit off. And up top, it does have the mini peg hole, so you can attach LEGO Friends accessories into this. Her face is the same one that she has in Hagrid's Hut Buckbeak's Rescue, which is not originally designed for her. It first appeared in the Pirates of the Caribbean Silent Mary set, and later this year, LEGO will be using it for Pepper Potts in Avengers Endgame, and... I think of the three characters, the face really does work fantastically for Hermione. It's not perfect, but I think it works pretty well. Um, and she does also get this alternate face where she is quite aggressive. Again, I think this works pretty well. The aggressive expression definitely doesn't make as much sense here as it did in Prisoner of Azkaban. Like, I know that definitely you can tell in a lot of places that this second wave of Harry Potter, the five sets that released in June or July in some places at least, definitely had kind of a limited print budget in comparison to the first wave and, well, I guess what we can call the third wave, which consists of the two sets that released worldwide in August as well as the advent calendar. So I can get why they wouldn't want to make a new face print for Hermione just to give her, like, a sad expression to go with this, but I think it definitely would have helped with winning some favor for some people. 
because the face isn't perfect and that compounds with the hair issue and another big one that you've probably already noticed to turn a lot of people off from what is, in my opinion, and what should be for everyone, a really good minifigure. Hermione's torso is definitely the least interesting aspect going on here. Um, I like how we have the metallic pink printing, and overall the design work is fine, but there isn't really anything to write home about. It just looks good. Um, yeah. I feel as though maybe the shaping, sort of the shading they did to sort of give the shape to her dress fitting around her body up towards the top, Maybe that could have been a bit less severe with that shading. I don't know, but other than that, it works pretty well in my opinion. And the back print, with just her bare back and the little tassel, yeah, yeah that works good. Now on to the part that a lot of people really don't like about this figure at all, which is the dress. Now, obviously, Lego doesn't make dress pieces for characters with short legs or mid legs. They only normally have the minifigure height dress piece, which used to just be a slope, but they introduced a new one last year. So a lot of people were hoping that for Yule Ball Hermione, Lego would introduce a brand new mold for a dress. And I actually kind of presumed that that wasn't going to happen because it was simply unlikely. And I was right, it didn't. What they did instead, though, did surprise me, because what we have is a 1x2 brick with printing on the front on top of a 1x2 plate, which I think from the front actually does look really good. I mean, the colors are all good. It's very vibrant. The printing on that 1x2 brick is fantastic. Easily the same quality of printing we get on like a normal minifigure part, which is not the standard to get, so that's very good. But then around the side, uh, yeah, that looks a bit awkward. I mean, in general, the Lego minifigure dress piece, I'm not saying has ever made a ton of sense with how it's just flat in the front and then it slopes back, but it looks a lot more natural than this does at the very least. And then no printing at the back, which just sort of adds to how this is kind of awkward. And again, not all dress pieces have to have printing at the back. In fact, most of the ones we've gotten in the Harry Potter line don't. I'm just saying that it does feel, you know, a smidge awkward in this case, because we have all that great detailing on the front, and then around every other side, it's just a brick and a plate. So I can kind of understand why people are annoyed by this, but at the same time, I can really understand Lego's situation in that they didn't really have any better options here, outside of making a new mold, which really wasn't an option, or giving her the normal dress piece and eschewing the height regulations that they've kept up in every other set outside of the Quidditch match from the first year, but that's acceptable. But anyways, and that's not much of an option either, so this was really the only way they could have done it, and I mean, I think it turned out pretty well. Maybe it's not the absolutely fantastic figure everyone had hoped for, but I think that for this just being a standard release minifigure in a standard release set, LEGO did a pretty good job. But that's enough about Hermione. After all, the dance isn't all about her, despite her little Cinderella moment. No, now let's move on to the character that I suppose should be the star of the show. His name isn't the title after all. That's right, everyone. It's time for... Harry freaking Potter. And this figure... Looks pretty good. Um, starting off, he has a dark brown wand. His hairpiece is the one they've done for Goblet of Fire, which is the Ninjago movie Lloyd hairpiece in black, which works fantastically. And the only other sets to include this hairpiece thus far are the other two sets with this year's version of Harry, which are the Hungarian Horntail Triwizard Challenge and the Rise of Voldemort. So it's not too common. And, yeah, it just works fantastically. It's the correct level of shaggy and height. It frames his scar actually quite well. Yeah, covers it up a bit, though, as well, which aids to the shaggy look. Yeah, the face print is the same one LEGO uses in every set this year, which I think this is definitely one of the more appropriate uses of it. In the past, I've commented on how maybe the face would be better if... 
there was more emotion to it to one side of it. Like, say, if Harry had a really angry face, or one where he was shouting a spell, but... For this, and I think that the more neutral expressions kind of work. This one is just, you know, his generic happy face, which is perfectly good. And looks like Daniel Radcliffe. While this one, which I'm normally un kind of annoyed at because Harry just looks, well, annoyed when he should probably be more angry in the situation. In this set, I totally agree with it because here Harry is just kind of annoyed with his best friends for squabbling and bored because... He's at a date with a girl that he really doesn't know and doesn't care about, and he only had to get a date because rules, and... I mean, I don't know, for some reason he didn't just realize that he and Ron could go together as friends. Then again, I suppose when I was 14 years old, I wouldn't have thought of that as an option. But anyway, Harry's torso is really nice because this is pretty common knowledge, but in case you don't know, back in 2010, Ligger released a Harry Potter minifigure based on his Yule Ball outfit. But that one had him without his, I don't know, I guess, robe jacket? I don't know what you'd call it, but it has him with just his vest and nothing over it. So this figure is actually a new variant, which is very nice to see, and it's the same thing they did with the Hungarian Horntail set, where they take a scene we've already gotten and an outfit we've already gotten, but they just make a change to it to make it a new variant, but not so to the point where it's, like, not as good. These two designs of Harry are both equally valid and work equally well, but they are slightly different, and I don't know what I'm trying to say. The point is I like it. Um, yeah, he has mid-legs, very simple back printing, and yeah, that's this set's version of Harry Potter. He's not the most amazing variant ever, definitely, but for what it's worth, he looks pretty snazzy. I, yeah, I like this Yule Ball variant of Harry. It's just too bad that in this set he won't exactly have anyone to dance with. The last member of the Golden Trio we get in this set is an, the other main Yule Ball variant that a lot of people have wanted. This is Ron from the Yule Ball, and yeah, this is a... Pretty good-looking figure. Um, yeah. Okay, so starting off, the hair piece is... It works. I mean, could it have been better? Yes. Shh. Is there an easy way for LEGO to make it better? No. Because, again, this set and all of these sets didn't have an extremely high budget, so they had to make sacrifices when they could, and we can see this a lot, such, in ha such as in how a lot of the characters, like Hermione and all of the Triwizard Champions, for example, don't get new face prints. And I could understand if this Ron's hairpiece was not even close to being on their list of top priorities. And in terms of hair pieces that they already had ready to go, this was clearly the best option. So I don't really mind this choice at all for them to just go with this hair piece. It's quick and simple. It's not perfect, but you know, it looks messy. It looks kind of greasy. It doesn't look as, I don't know, I guess you'd go girly, although Ron's hair in the movie didn't look, you know, it doesn't look like exactly like his hair in the movie, but it works well enough. His face print is the same one from Hagrid's Hut, which I think works pretty well for Ron. I think it's a fair enough likeness to Rupert Grin. I still think it's odd how these he's newer Ron figures don't have freckles. I That just doesn't work to me. Even if Rupert Grin really maybe even shouldn't have them as much, it just seems weird to have Ron with no freckles. Um... But yeah, this is good enough. However, the alternate face is perfect for this set. Like, when LEGO was designing this figure, they designed this face for this exact scene, and you know it. And, I mean, honestly, it's not that surprising since this figure only appears in two sets, but considering that there's a good chance that LEGO might consider to use this raw... Did I just say consider... The Lego might continue to use this Ron face going into the Order of the Phoenix and Half-Blood Prince, and they might start using it for other characters. It's pretty funny that they designed a face print that is so intensely 
just tied to this specific scene from Goblet of Fire. And honestly, though, it's totally worth it, because this face is absolutely fantastic. I don't think I've mentioned it yet, but Ron has a dark brown... Uh, actually, no, a regular brown wand. Harry gets a dark brown wand, and I don't think I mentioned that either, because, I mean, I don't know, maybe I kind of just didn't. I mean, you probably noticed. I'm guessing that the majority of people that watch my videos have eyes. I'd hope. I mean, if you don't have eyes, then why are you watching my reviews? I mean, if you if you don't have eyes and you are watching my reviews, I don't mean any disrespect, but I'm just saying that it's a bit odd, not gonna lie. But anyway, um, so Ron's torso is really well detailed. Like, this has to be the best detailed print in the entire set, hands down. Like, just at first glance, it might not seem too detailed. Like, yeah, you have that nice lacy collar. You have the little red lace as well. You have all the brown and the slightly darker brown on the waistcoat, but if you look at it from certain angles, you can just see, like, all... There's this subtle detailing, and it's all printed in dark gray of all colors, which really creates a good, very subtle contrast surprisingly subtle, like, you wouldn't think that reddish brown and dark gray would blend together this well, but they really do. Anyway, much like Harry, Ron gets mid-legs, and around the back, you just get a bit more of the red lace, and more of that pattern, which you can see better here, with, like, those flowers, and it's just a really well-done torso. And that's this Ron figure. Much like Hermione, it's not perfect, but I think it's pretty good. But that's enough of the main trio. Now let's move on to our, our other Triwizard Champions. I probably should have just said Triwizard Champions because that wasn't overly grammatically correct the way I put it the first time. But anyway. So here is Victor Crumb, who I'm putting first because he is the only one of the four champions in the set to actually come with a date. Good job there on his part. And, yeah, I think that this figure is alright. His wand is in dark orange, which is nice, since that's definitely the least common color of the piece thus far of the, I suppose, five main designs that you can use for any wizard, really. Outside of, you know, white and purple, which are very specific. But anyway, so you get that. No printing on his legs, which is fine. His torso is his one exclusive element to the set, which is printed quite nicely. I really like the fur trim. It's simple, but it looks pretty perfect. Especially when you get more of that around the back. Yeah, that's just very nicely done. Moving up to his head and hair piece. If you've seen my Hungarian Horntail review, you probably know the drill here. The hairpiece is not 100% accurate, but it's probably the best Lego could do in, a, in the modern way of doing things. Face doesn't work because he doesn't have facial hair, and on this side he just doesn't look like Victor Crumb. He's just too happy, and I have this, and I think this face is the one that you want to have for this because he's dancing with Hermione and like, you know, Disney moment. But honestly, this face still doesn't even work for that. Like, maybe if we had the mouth closed and he just had this shape of slightly tilted smile, then I would, then it would be fine. But the teeth showing, he just looks too happy for the character. He's very stern. Which is why I think this alternate face actually works pretty well. I mean, it's nothing fantastic. It's not even that great, but, you know... It's an improvement over the other face, at least. So that's Victor Crumb. Again, not a great minifigure, but the torso is really good, and I can excuse the face a little bit on the same grounds that I can excuse the, the flaws with Hermione. It's budget. They gave too much budget to, I don't know, what had budget this year? Hidden Side? Yeah, probably. Um, honestly, though, I can't really complain, because Hidden Side is awesome, and yeah, I'll accept Hidden Side being good over Crumb having a new face. I I I'll make that trade. But anyway, enough about Crumb. Now let's move on to the prettiest boy at Hogwarts. 
Cedric Diggory, and boy do I hope that nothing horrible happens to him, haha. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, he gets a standard reddish-brown wand, and his torso is quite similar to Harry's. If I just pull him in, but you can see that there is a difference, because Cedric has a smaller bow tie, which is also black. And there are other very minor differences, but that's really the only one that you'd notice immediately at first glance. Yeah, I like this figure. He's well done up, very classy. Honestly, though, I think that this torso you could probably just use in not even like a Harry Potter setting. Like, this just works good for... works well, rather. You know, for just a rather dressy muggle, even. Yeah, I really like this torso. His back print is very similar to Harry's, just a couple of lines, very simple. His hairpiece is the same one he had in the minifigure series, and his face print is the same one that that belongs to young Han Solo and also Hawkeye, I guess. And honestly, I really like this face. I go more into this in my Hungarian Horntail review, but... I think that this face actually works pretty well for the actor who portrayed Cedric in the films. Yeah, looks quite noble on this side. I also like the aggressive side. Yeah, I really like this face, and I really like this new Lego design for Cedric. He just looks quite classy, quite cool. Yeah, good figure. Our final champion is Miss Fleur Delacour, and she gets a dark tan wand, and yeah, this figure is definitely a bit bland. Um, the hairpiece is not fully accurate to the scene, but I understand why Lego didn't want to go out of their way to pre-color an existing piece I'd imagine they would have to do to make more accurate hair, so this is fine. Her face print is Ellie Sattler's from Jurassic Park, and I really wish that they could have just introduced the face she has in the Bobaton's carriage earlier on, because I know that, like, the surprise expression doesn't really work for this scene. But, you know, the scared face we get here doesn't really make sense here either, and I would have preferred to have the more flourish smile. This one just looks too Laura Derny. And this alternate face also looks too Laura Derny, but, I mean, hey, at least there aren't any major things wrong like Crumb. I mean, in fact, this face isn't too bad a likeness. I mean, it's not great, since it wasn't designed for her, but it's not terrible. The issue is just that it's basically a perfect likeness to someone else, so it's just a bit awkward. Flair's torso is not that good. The skin tone issue is something that, overall, this hair, these new line of Harry Potter sets have been somewhat affected by, but in most cases, it's not too bad, such as on Hermione here, where it basically matches up. Or it actually kind of makes sense. Like, Sirius, it would make sense that he's really pale, same with the Executioner. With Fleur here, it just doesn't work, because her arm is the normal color, and then her shoulder is just practically white, and it looks n not good. I do like the rest of the design on the front, though, with the metallics used for the lines going down the dress and for the flowers. Yeah. Yeah, this is good. The lines around the waist are actually pretty well done. Yeah, the back, just more of the same. Unfortunate just how much skin is showing up there and how bad it looks. And it's also unfortunate the dress is completely unprinted on the actual dress piece. It ends up looking pretty plain. But that's Fleur, and that is our last student character from any of the three schools represented in the tournament. So now let's move on to our first of two headmasters included in the set. Here we have Albus, Percival, Wolfric, Brian, Dumbledore, and this figure Lego really went all in on. Now, I'm not sure why they went all in on this Dumbledore, but they definitely did. He gets a dark tan wand because this still is not 
an Elder Wand. I don't know why. They're going to have to make the Elder Wand eventually, but I guess they're just holding off on it. I know they'll probably make it a selling point with one of the Deathly Hallows sets. I'd imagine that they would probably do something like that. But anyway, um, this figure, though, is fantastically detailed. Starting off, you can see that his hat piece and his beard are the ones from the collectible minifigure series, but the hat is in a new color, with it being double-molded with light gray and dark tan, with dark brown printing for the tassel, which is really well done. Yeah, that, that just looks really good from all angles. That is a really good print for the hat, and it's a, just a good color to get it in. However, a slightly odd thing comes when we remove the beard of Dumbledore and the hair, and we reveal that this figure, actually his face print, is the Richard Harris Dumbledore face, when obviously by this point Dumbledore was being portrayed by Michael Gambon. And, I mean, I kind of understand because LEGO had already made a Michael Gambon face in the minifigure series, and again, it would add to the budget to make a separate version of that face for their future set. So it just makes more sense, I suppose, to keep using the Richard Harris face in our retail sets. It just definitely seems, you know, a bit strange, I'm not gonna lie. But he does get an alternate face, where he has no spectacles and is frowning somewhat and if you are curious here is what that looks like when it's framed up by the beard yeah but just for keeping that stuff off we can get a better look at his outfit which is quite well detailed on the torso and the dress piece both um, yeah, there is a bit of an unfortunate printing cutoff on the dr between the torso and the dress, but I can't lie and say that that wasn't expected, because it totally was. Um, what is unfortunate, though, and not entirely expected, is the fact that the white printing on the dress is not the same as the one on the torso, and... I mean, again, it makes sense because they are printing white onto a different color, but lavender is relatively light, so I would hope that they would be able to print it correctly, and it's just is a bit unfortunate because it's inconsistent, and it does hurt the look of the figure. Same thing goes around the back, which has a ton of fantastic printing on the back of the torso, which you are never going to see. Thanks, Lego. But anyway, um, yeah, that's fantastically well detailed with the red and the gold. We get a tassel coming down the back. Yeah, really good design for Dumbledore for the set. I think it's a bit odd that they just put so much effort into this figure, considering how, like, Yule Ball Dumbledore was on screen for, what, 10 seconds? But, I mean, hey, whatever floats your boat, Lego. Yeah. So that is this set's Albus Dumbledore, and we just get one more minifigure included in the set. So let's take a look at her now. Here we have Bobaton's headmistress, Madame Maxime, and this figure is very well done. Starting off, she gets the wand piece in dark orange, same as Crumb. And if you can't tell what Lego did here to account for her extra height being half giant and all, is that instead of using a standard dress piece for her legs, they just used a three brick tall slope with printing, and then you just, you know, put the rest of the minifigure on top of that, and it ends up looking really good, actually. Um, yeah, I like it. The arms definitely do seem a bit short in comparison, but it is a Lego minifigure, so the style is already kind of chibiized, I guess you could say, and it doesn't actually look too far off. It it doesn't a lot better than you'd expect, I suppose. Um, yeah, the hairpiece is the Bob hairpiece that first appeared in the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull set. It's for Irina Spalco, 
but it's in dark brown, which I do believe is a new color and exclusive to this set at the moment, since for some reason in the Bobaton's carriage, she inaccurately has black hair. I don't know why they changed that, but this is the correct color. She gets a new face print, which you could find a bit odd, considering just how many important characters didn't get new face prints for these sets, but, you know, I think it's acceptable considering how there really weren't any existing face prints that even come close to representing how the actress looks. So yeah, I like this one with a rather sage smile. And the other side is quite sad, which... Yeah, this works too. I really like the new face print they gave Madame Maxime. Definitely just an extra amount of luxury that I honestly was not expecting to get with this figure. Really pleased here. The torso and dress are also quite nice. You can see that she is in a, her Yule Ball attire, of course, just like everyone else. And the white dress has a ton of great metallic pink detail, in which you can sort of see how that changes color as the light hits it, and... Yeah, I just really like it. It's nice and shiny. Yeah, I mean, there isn't much else to say. It's just a lot of, lot of good pink glossy detailing. Glossy not really being the right word, but you know what I mean. Silvery, I guess. It sort of has that silvery feeling to it, I suppose. Then around the back, you get the same amount of de kind of detailing, except due to the sloped surface of the back of the dress... The light will hit the different pieces at different points to paint. And for some reason, the back of the torso is not as metallic. Um, it is still metallic, don't get me wrong, but the, but it just doesn't shine as much as any other part of the figure, which is a bit odd. But I do really like the back printing on the dress. And a very nice touch that really does help with this figure's scale, I think, is how they printed the bottom of what I guess you would call the shirt part of her dress. They printed that down onto the dress piece. Um, you can actually see it right here, the bottom of that. So it ends up, you know, lengthening her torso a bit and making her seem less oddly proportioned than she would otherwise. So yeah, that is Madame Maxime the final minifigure of the set, and quite a nice one at that. She is not an exclusive character, since again, she comes in the Bobaton's carriage, so this set actually doesn't include any exclusive characters, just all exclusive variants, but she's a very nice one, and most of the figures in the set are at least good variants, if not fantastic ones. She's pretty good, though. But, yeah... And that just about wraps up the first part. Lego Harry Potter set number 75948, Hogwarts Clock Tower. Because the set is quite large and has so many minifigures, the review will be split into two parts. Part two will be going up soon and will feature my thoughts on the castle build itself. But for the moment, thank you all so much for watching this video, and I hope to see you all in the next one, which will be coming out very soon. Good night, everyone.